New York Times uh, reporting this morning that your committee has concluded uh, that you have enough evidence to make a criminal referral for President Trump to the Justice Department for obstructing an official proceeding and for conspiracy to defraud the United States. Um, is that true? Do you have enough evidence to refer Trump for criminal charges? Well, we have not made a decision about referrals uh, on the committee. I think that it is absolutely the case. It's absolutely clear that um, what President Trump uh, was doing, uh, what, what a number of people around him were doing, that they knew it was unlawful, they did it anyway. I think you certainly saw that in the decision uh, that was issued by Judge Carter a few weeks ago, uh, where he concluded that uh, it was more likely than not that the President of the United States was engaged uh, uh, in criminal activity. Uh, I think what we have seen is a massive and well-organized and well-planned uh, effort that used multiple tools to try to overturn an election. Uh, you've seen just in the last few days uh, a, a plea agreement from one of the leaders of the Proud Boys, which, which lays out in really chilling detail the extent to which violence was planned, um, the extent to which uh, the message that went out on December 19th about the planning, about the rally in Washington, and don't forget, Donald Trump tweeted out that message, be, be there, be wild, um, that the day after that message, uh, the organization and the planning started, and, and that they understood, that they knew that they were going to attempt to use violence to try to stop the transfer of power. That is the, the definition of an insurrection, mm -hmm. uh, and it is, it is absolutely chilling. And just to be clear, you've seen this evidence and you believe President Trump committed these two crimes. Uh, I, what I've just quoted to you is a public document. It is the plea agreement in the, the Donahoe case. Uh, everybody can look at it. I, I would highly recommend everybody does look at it. It's the statement of offense in that plea agreement. Uh, the committee has uh, obviously been focused very much, has got a, a tremendous amount of testimony and documents um, that I think very, very clearly demonstrate the extent of the planning and the organization and the objective, uh, and, and the objective was absolutely to try to stop the count of electoral votes, to try to interfere with that official proceeding, and it's absolutely clear that they knew what they were doing was wrong, they knew that it was unlawful, and they did it anyway. There's a dispute on your committee, as I don't need to tell you. Some people feel like a referral, which actually has no uh, legal weight, uh, would only taint the process under which uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland might act. Uh, some feel that that's the wrong argument, that right is right, and, and the co committee has the evidence it has. But where do you come down? There's not really a dispute on the committee. Um, the committee is, is uh, working uh, in a really collaborative way to discuss these issues, uh, as we are with all of the issues we're addressing, um, and, and we'll continue to work together to do so. So I, I wouldn't characterize there uh, as being a dispute on the committee. I think that um, it is it is the single most collaborative committee on which I've ever served. Uh, I'm very proud of the bipartisan way in which we're operating, and I'm confident that we will we will work to come to agreement on uh, on all of the issues that we're facing. So I wouldn't say that it's accurate right now to say that there's a dispute on this issue. Former President Trump's uh, daughter and senior advisor Ivanka Trump uh, testified in front of your committee for eight hours this week. Was her testimony helpful? Did she shed any new light on those crucial hours while the attack was underway? Certainly her testimony was helpful, uh, as has been the testimony of many hundreds of others who have appeared in front of the committee. Uh, I, and I would just note that, that it really um, tells you why uh, the fact that Dan Scavino and Peter Navarro have completely refused to cooperate the committee cooperate with the committee, why that was, uh, is so clearly contemptuous, why we were right to move contempt charges against both of them. Um, it is, it is, uh, there's absolutely no, no privilege in this country that is uh, an absolute uh, blanket immunity from having to come and testify, having to come and talk to a congressional committee, particularly under these circumstances. Uh, and so the committee is going to continue to uh, work to get evidence and testimony. And again, we are uh, incredibly grateful. I've been incredibly grateful and, and frankly moved by um, the, the many, many people who have come before us because they know it's their patriotic responsibility and duty to tell us about what happened and to make sure that it never happens again. 
House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy uh, is in the region. I think he's in Poland. Uh, and He just issued a statement in, in support of democracy and, and uh, the individuals fighting for a free and democratic Ukraine. And I'm just wondering if you feel that there's any disconnect there, given the fact that uh, he has not exactly been supportive of your efforts to get to the bottom of the attempt uh, to overturn the election in the United States. Well, what I would say is that what's happening today in Ukraine is a reminder that um, democracy is fragile, that democracy must be defended, uh, and that each one of us in a position to do so has an obligation to do so. Clearly, I think Leader McCarthy uh, failed to do that, failed to put his oath to the Constitution ahead of his own um, personal political gains. Uh, and I think that, you know, uh, at the end of the day, each one of us is responsible for our own actions and activity, but, but if we don't stand for our Constitution, if we don't stand for democracy, if we don't stand for freedom, uh, if, we, if we forget that our oath to our Constitution is an oath to a document, it's not an oath to uh, an individual, uh, we've got to always remember that or, or our democracy is in peril. All right, Congresswoman Liz Cheney, always good to have you on the show. Thank you so much, appreciate Thanks, it. Jake.